ओम श्री साई राम प्रशांति संदेश साई पर्ल्स ऑफ विजडम वेलकम्स यू ऑन ट्वेंटी थर्ड नवम्बर नाइनटीन हंड्रेड ट्वेंटी सिक्स इन दी आवर्स ऑफ मॉर्निंग अमिश द रेवरबरेटिंग ऑस्पिशियस साउंड ऑफ द म्यूजिकल इंस्ट्रूमेंट्स प्लेइंग ऑन देर ओन गॉड हिमसेल्फ incarnated in a remote village of puttaparthi in andhra pradesh his radiantly beautiful face with attractive features dusky glowing skin and curly hair delighted everyone he had a mole on his left cheek as if to ward off the evil eye this enchanting beautiful babe Field mother Isuramma, grandmother Lakshmamma, and the neighbor Subamma's life with bliss. Since he was born as a blessing, after the mother had partaken the Sachinarayana Vrata Prasad, he was named Sachinarayana. Everyone started calling this darling babe Satya, like the waxing moon. of the shukla paksha the baby was growing more beautiful each day on seeing his enchanting form mother iswarama was reminded of balakrishna of gokula as the child grew little older he started drawing horizontal lines of vibhuti on his own forehead he would insist that his older sister should do this for him everyone was enchanted by his charming looks and ways when he turned 6 the favorite child of grandfather kondamarazu started taking part in plays organized by his grandfather's drama company his unusual beauty sweet melodious voice and dancing skill used to make the audience feel as though sri rama sri krishna had appeared once again on earth once when a program was organized to collect school funds sachinarayana enacted the role of the well known dancer rishyendra mani so perfectly that none realized this was not her performing after sri sachinarayana proclaimed his avatar hood and declared that i am sai baba many devotees began to throng puttaparthi and several festivals started being celebrated there in the procession during navratri Bhagwan Baba's form looked very beautiful and divine. Earlier, during the procession of Ramanavami too, Bala Satya's playmates used to dress him up as Sri Rama because of his charming form and divine qualities. During Navratri festival, Swami's form. used to seem especially divine and attractive in 1946 the devotees decided to take swami in a procession in a beautifully decorated palanquin and swami acceded to their wish at the time the devotees saw him on different days as the indescribable glowing Minaxi of Madurai, Shalakshi of Kashi, and Kamakshi of Kanchi. Sometimes he was seen as Shiva Shakti Avatar, and those who were blessed with this resplendent darshan were verily fortunate souls. It has been an old tradition for devotees to sing songs. and stotras 
describing the exquisite beauty of God. From ancient days, the sages and saints have been describing the divine beauty. In the Ramaraksha Stotram, while describing the beauty of Prabhu Ramachandra, Buddha Kaushika Rishi says, One should meditate on the beautiful Sri Rama, whose hands are adorned with a bow, who is seated in a lotus pose, wearing a yellow silken garment, whose eyes are competing with fresh lotus petals, the one who is blissful and his eyes are set on the lotus face of Sita, who is seated on his left thigh, whose skin is lustrous like the dark rain failed clouds, and who is adorned with various precious jewels, and whose head is crowned with a halo of shining curling hair. That was the description by Buddha Kaushika Rishi. Let us meditate on this charming Sri Rama. While describing the beautiful form of Panduranga, Sant Janeshwar sings just like the luster emitting forth from innumerable precious gems, the effulgent glow on Panduranga's divine skin is spreading in all directions. That effulgence and its immeasurable beauty cannot be described in words. Similarly, God's beauty has been described by a number of devotees in many ways. In the Kakad Harati, early morning Harati of Shirdi Sai, Sainath, it is said, I perform your Kakad Harati early in the morning, O Sainath. Accept this Laghu Seva, small service of this child of yours, and bless me with a vision of your Chinmaya Rupa, all knowing, effulgent form. In the Sri Satya Sai Suprabhatam, it is said, Deshantaragata Mudashta Bhattivya Murtim Sandarjana Bhidati Samyutta Samyutta Chitra Vrutya. See, the intellectuals from several countries have come here to seek your darshan. They are yearning to see your divine form. In the Sri Satsai Ramaraksha Stotram, Bhagavan Baba has been described as one should meditate on the beautiful Sri Rama, the embodiment of love, his face sweet with a smile, framed in the halo of his curly hair, wearing an orange silken garment with his eyes competing with fresh lotus petals, who is gracious, the distributor of the divine vibhuti created from his hands for the benefit of the people, calm and peaceful, seated on a lion throne with raised hand bestowing bones. The description of this beautiful form makes the devotees experience waves of bliss, giving them the divine ambrosial Sai Darshan within. What happens due to this beautiful Darshan? What happens? Swami himself has told devotees about benefits of Darshan. When Bhagwan Baba comes to the Darshan hall amidst Veda chanting all the devotees, Baba says, should focus on his beautiful divine form with undivided attention. None should leave their places in the darshan grounds before he leaves for his residence, for otherwise they are deprived of the divine energy that emits from him during darshan. A well-known scientist, Dr. Frank Baranowski, once photographed Swami with a Kirlian camera and saw that 
Swami was surrounded by a wide, white, pink and blue aura which also had gold and silver stripes. All these colors of the aura are known to represent pure love. Dr. Baranowski was stunned to see this phenomenon as he had never seen such an aura before. Sri Satyasai Darshan bathes the devotees in the race of love, peace and bliss and it is a soul-stirring experience for one and all. Darshanam Papanashanam, Darshan of a Divine Being has the power to destroy all our sins. This description matches perfectly with the darshan of the charming form of Sri Satyasai, which has the power to destroy our sins and bad sins. Bhagavan Baba is the embodiment of purity and is always engrossed in promoting sacredness in his devotees too. Swami says purity should be practiced in three ways, purity in thought, Purity in speech, purity in deeds. Once a person attains these three types of purity, he becomes worthy of my love. It is possible to achieve this purity through constant namasmarana and serving all beings as forms of God. Let us absorb this story which shows how Swami showers his love on those devotees who have attained purity. Swami's biographer, Sri N. Kasturi, mother, Janakamma, was an ardent devotee of Swami. Through each action of hers, one could see that she was a recipient of God's grace. Swami had fully bestowed His grace upon her. One day, Janakamma said to Baba, Swami, in my last moments, Will I receive the holy Tirtha from your sacred lotus hands? Will I attain liberation? Swami said, yes, it will be so. As Janakamma and drew near, Swami was at Bangalore. But he had promised the sacred soul a boom, it had to happen so. From Swami's photograph, which was on a wall next to his bedside, Tirtha. Started flowing, Janikamma partook it thrice and peacefully attained moksha. The same story is about a lady living in a city who was constantly engaged in Namasmarana. In accordance with Swami's teachings, she was also involved in seva work. She was now advanced in age. Once while in Prashantanayam, she said to Swami, I am old now, yet I am scared of death. Baba replied, Don't be scared. I will be with you till the last moment, and this is my promise. In due time, the old lady's end neared, and she passed away. Due to the promise given by Swami, the burden on her mind had been removed. But the rest of the, her family members were curious to know how Swami was going to fulfill His promise of being with her until the end. How was everyone to understand this? Yes, a hearsay was brought to take away the dead body on its last journey. As her body was placed inside the hearsay or casket, they saw a picture of Swami inside with a smiling face and the Abhaya Hasta raised in blessing. It was as if Swami was telling, I'll be with you till the end. See, how wonderful experience it is. Here is a story about how Bhagwan Baba instantly grants the rewards for our good karmas. In 1968, Bhagwan Baba paid a visit to East Africa. At the time, 
a gentleman there heard about him for the first time, but it did not occur to him to take Swami's darshan. Not just this, but even when his wife wanted to attend one of the programs and he went to leave her there, he came away without entering the venue. During this time, a close friend of his told him, only by Swami's grace, my diabetes was cured. On hearing this, he had a change of heart and started getting the urge to seek Swami's darshan. But he was told that Bhagwan Baba was returning back to India on the very same day. He thought of going to the airport to seek darshan and since time was short, he got into his car and drove fast in order to reach in time. But the airport was about 40 kilometers from his house. After having driven halfway, he saw a motorcade of cars coming from the opposite direction. He saw someone he knew in the group. He stopped the person and asked him, Are you returning from the airport? The person replied, Yes, Bhagwan Baba just left for India. So we bade him goodbye and are returning back. Although he was terribly disappointed on hearing this, something within urged him to go on to the airport and he drove at a faster period. On the way, he started praying earnestly to Swami. You came very close to my house, but I did not seek your darshan. Now I have realized your glory and I am yearning to see you. If I have performed any meritorious deed, please let me have your darshan. As the prayer ended, he reached the airport. Before entering the premises, he bent his head down reverentially, touched the gate with his head and went inside. As he walked ahead, he saw a plane landing on the runway. The door was open and wonder of wonders, Bhagwan Baba was standing in the doorway. He could not contain his happiness and tears of joy starting rolling down his cheeks. He said, Bhagwan, from this very moment, my heart will have only your image. How did this come about? After the flight took off, the plane developed a technical snag, so it was brought back. Within few minutes, the snag was rectified and Bhagwan left. Every devotee will agree that it was only the omnipresent, omniscient Swami, Leela. Swami returned only in response to the prayers of his pure-hearted devotees to give him darshan and reward him for his meritorious acts. Swami says, Karma is a seed which is bound to grow into a tree and reap its fruits. But if the seed is roasted in the fire of non-attachment, it is reminded rather rendered fruitless and frees from the bondage of sorrow and pain. That's the meaning of all his actions and what you call the divine Leela. As I transcend the perishable, I am even higher than the imperishable. Therefore, I am declared as Purushottama, the Supreme Person in the world and in the Vedas. This is the declaration and the narration of the Supreme Person, the Divinity. Here is a story which narrates how Sri Sai Purushottama showered his grace on an innocent farmer. This farmer named Ratandhan Gandhvi, Ratandhan Gandhvi lived in a village called Makwana in Gujarat. He was simple by nature and found it hard to make both ends meet. 
due to the famine, all the farmers in that area, including Ratandan, were undergoing lot of difficulties. There was no fodder for the cattle and the conditions were really adverse. To find a way out of the situation, he decided to consult a relative of his by name Gulab Das Barrett and traveled to a village called Limodi near Rajkota to meet Gulab Das. Gulab Das Barrett was a devotee of Swami. In fact, a Sai center was established in his house and activities such as bhajan and nagar sinkirtan were conducted there regularly. On hearing Ratandan said story, Gulab Das suggested a remedy. He suggested that Ratandan should pray to Swami from his heart and then sprinkle vibhuti all over his farm. Ratudan, once a robber, somewhere was unable to believe that Swami is God because Swami's physical form did not match with the image of Sri Krishna that was installed in his heart. But since he was desperate, he did as he was told. And wonder of wonders, that year there was plenty of rain and he reaped a very good harvest. Ratadhan gathered up courage and travelled all the way to Puttaparthi and in other areas to offer his gratitude to Swami. Baba called him for an interview. During the interview, he asked Ratudan, you have been telling everyone that a person with this type of hair cannot be my Murli Dhara Sri Krishna, isn't it? Ratudan said, yes, Baba. Swami told him, look here. And lo and behold, at every moment, he saw Swami form, changing into, changing into Murli Dharas face. This kind of thing we have not heard any time before. With tearful eyes, Ratnadan fell at Swami's feet and said, Baba, please forgive me. Please grant me devotion. To which Swami answered, are you giving up your business completely or not? Ratudan asked, which one? Then Baba said, Tell me the truth. Were you not a decoy, looting and killing people, repenting for his past deeds? Ratudan once again fell at the Swami's feet. Baba, gave him vibhuti and sent some away. As Ratudan walked out of the interview room, he was completely a transformed person. They did not disturb others as they do their sadhana. That's very important. I'm so glad that you could make it convenient to be here to listen to Sai Leela Amritam. It is Ambrosia of Divine Leela which I could share with you. Thank you. Meet again.